guys, my name is Pixie from Appy Builder, and today we're going to work on some basic animation using the Ball Bounce tutorial. Once you're done creating your brand new project, we can get started. Before we add components, let's customize our screen properties, just like we did in the Talk To Me app. Can you tell just by looking at the design viewer which screen properties I changed? If you said I changed the action bar color, you're correct. But what else did I change? I set the horizontal alignment to center, but I kept the vertical alignment at top and I changed the screen's title to say Ball Bounce. This time, I also decided to change the status bar color, which you won't see until we test the app. Drag two labels from the user interface palette onto the design viewer. You don't always have to rename components, but it's good practice to rename your labels so you can identify them easily in the blocks editor. Click on label one in the components window and press the rename button. I'm gonna call this label edge. I use the abbreviated term LBL to indicate that this is a label. Press OK to save the changes. In the properties window, change the text for this label to display edge hit. Feel free to make as many visual changes as you want to this label. You can change the color of the label or change the size of the label's text. When you're finished, click on label two and rename it to label taps. The text for this label should be set to the number zero. I'm gonna change the color of this label, change the font size, and make it bold. Next, click on the Drawing and Animation palette. Drag a canvas onto the Design Viewer. In the Properties window, set the height to Fill Parent and set the width to Fill Parent. This will resize the canvas so that it fills the remaining space on the screen. Now click on the Ball component. Drag it over the viewer. Notice that you cannot place the ball outside of the canvas. If you try to drop the ball on top of a label, the component will disappear and won't be added to the viewer. The ball and image sprites can only be placed inside a canvas. These sprites cannot go outside the bounds of the canvas. Notice that as we move the ball around the canvas with our mouse cursor, the X and Y coordinates change in relation to the ball's location on the canvas. Let's change some default properties for the ball. First, change the ball's color to whatever you think looks nice. You can also set the radius of the ball to make it larger or smaller. I think radius 20 is a good size. I'm gonna change the speed to five because I want the ball to move at a decent pace. By default, the interval is set to 100. The interval is the ball's internal clock. An interval of 100 is one tenth of a second. An interval of 500 is half a second. And an interval of 1000 is one second. So if I change the interval to 1000, then this ball would move at a speed of five once every second, which would make the ball move like this. For this example, we want the ball movement to be fluid, so we can set the interval to zero. Later when you test the app, play around with the speed and interval properties so you can see the differences. We are done with design view, so let's move on to the blocks editor. We're going to make the ball move at a fluid pace and stop when we click on it. When the ball is in motion again, we want it to move at the same steady pace. Open the built-in variable blocks. Grab the initialize global variable. Click on the word name, which will allow you to rename this variable. Call it default speed. Open the built-in math block and grab the number zero. We want to match the default speed that we set for the ball in the properties window. Click on ball. The green blocks are known as getter and setter blocks. These blocks let you get or set any of the ball's properties. If you look closely, you'll notice these are the exact same properties from design view. Grab ball1.speed and replace it with the number zero. An X appears indicating an error. Certain component properties cannot be determined until the app is actually running. So how do we do that? All screens have an initialize event. If you need to do something in your app as soon as the app starts, you can use the screen's initialize procedure. Hover over default speed. This will bring up a quick getter and setter block for this global variable. Click on set global default speed and place it inside the screen's initialize event. We declare this variable as zero, which is just a placeholder, and as soon as the app starts, that zero becomes the number five. Now we need to make the ball move. Click on ball one and grab the dot flung event. Open up ball one again and scroll down until you see set ball one dot heading. Certain events have built in variables. For example, X and Y will get the ball's current X and Y coordinate location on the canvas. If we want the ball to move in any direction, we can change the heading. Hover over heading in the flung event and grab the get heading value. 
set ball one dot heading to heading. Now we need to set the speed of the ball. A shortcut is to copy ball one dot heading and paste it below. We can use the little drop down menu on the block to change the property heading to speed. We could call the current speed value of the ball, but in this example that speed is going to change, so we need to call the global variable for default speed. We have a couple of events that trigger when the user interacts with this ball. If the user lightly taps on the ball, use the touched event. We can use the ball.touchdown event if the user should hold their finger on the ball. Copy and paste set ball1.speed into this event. Delete global default speed and replace it with the number zero. When a ball or sprite speed is set to zero, it stops moving. Click on label taps, scroll down until you see set label taps dot text. Then click on the built-in math blocks. Grab the addition block. You can connect blocks together to create mathematical equations. In this case, we want to increase the number of taps by one. Open up label taps again and grab the getter property for label dot text. These two blocks look almost identical, but the first block will change or set the label's text, whereas the second block will get or retrieve the value that is currently stored in the label. When the game starts, this label should display the number zero. Zero plus one equals one. So this label will change to say one. Every time we click on the ball, this label will increase by one. We're almost done. Open up ball one and let's use the edge reached event. The edge of the screen is determined by a number rather than the words up or down or north or south. Let's output the numeric value of the edge in label edge dot text. Open up the built in text block and select join. Then grab an empty text block from the same menu. Enter the words edge hit. Be sure to leave a space after the colon. The second part of the join block should be the current value of edge. Open up ball one and use the dot bounce procedure. Set the edge argument to the value of edge. Now we can test the app and make sure it's working properly. Watch the screen as the ball moves around the canvas. Each time the ball bounces off the edge of the canvas, label edge is updated with the numeric value of that edge. When edge equals three, that means the ball hit the right side of the canvas. Now hold your finger on the ball and it should stop moving. Label taps has been updated from zero to one because we touched the ball one time. Click on the ball and fling it in any direction, which triggers another touched event and causes the ball to continue moving in that direction. That's all for now. Great job, guys. We are done. Don't forget to visit the Appy Builder community where you'll find more tips and tutorials created by community members. That's all for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Don't forget to thumbs up the video and have a great day. Bye.